in a world. George, can you help me set up my recording studio? Absolutely. Where voiceover talent are stuck in their closets. Is there a way to improve the quality of my audio files? Oh yeah. And they need to deliver finished audio tracks. You are my hero. Yeah, oh, thank you. That's sweet. Yeah. There is one man who takes it all on. Uh Real time excellent yeah. Widom's World. Widom's World. Rated VO. Hi, this is George Whittem reporting for Whittem's World. You probably might be able to hear in my voice that I've got a cold. Coming on week two right now, uh, fighting a sinus infection. Oh, it's a nightmare. But uh, slowly starting to feel a little bit better day by day. Last week's post definitely brought up some interest in figuring out how do you reduce noise floor. Now that we know how to calculate it, or at least come up with a figure based on peak noise floor values, how do you deal with the problem? Noise floor can be caused by numerous different things in your recording environment. It can either be caused by something outside of your equipment. So that would be um, ambient noise, structure noise that's from inside your building, noise from outside your building, humming from uh, vans, air conditioning units, re old refrigerators, anything that creates vibration. And if you're in a multi-unit building, like an apartment or a condo, it's, you're going to have it much worse than most people with a single dwelling home because there's machinery attached to that building and it's vibrating the entire building and resonating the whole time. So a lot of the noise that most people have that increases their, their, their uh, noise floor readings is often rumble, rumble, which is really low frequency noise. And the good news is a lot of the time that can be removed using a, an EQ setting, what we often call a high pass filter, set at between 80 and 100 hertz that will very effectively remove most of that low frequency noise. But you may also have just environmental noise or just the sound of your computer in the same room with your microphone, the fans of the computer, the hard drives. If you have a hard drive sitting up on a desk, that can be humming and resonating with the desk, which then the microphone picks up. Um, so all of these things contribute to the noise. These are all things that are outside of, that the microphone is acoustically picking up. You know, it's hearing like your, like your ear does. But there's also issues with the equipment itself. So if your microphone is not very sensitive so that it needs a lot of gain to boost the signal, that means you have to run your mic preamp at a really, really high setting. And chances are, if you find yourself having to do that, it oftentimes will amplify um, the self noise of your system, which is usually heard as sort of a, a hiss or a whoosh, kind of a white noise sound. So those issues are dealt with by either one, upgrading equipment, two, setting up proper gain staging. So if you have a mic, a mic preamp, a mixer, and say an M box, you have got sometimes up to five or six different places to adjust volume and gain settings. And if that's not done right, it'll increase noise dramatically. Um, or it could just be that the noise is within acceptable limits and it's not worth worrying about. If your noise is below, say, 45 dB or so, you can many times kind of get away with using a very minimal amount of what we call downward expansion or noise gate that will take the ambient noise floor of minus 45 and through clever processing reduce it to say minus 55. So if you do it in a subtle way it won't be noticeable um, and it'll just reduce the apparent noise floor. But this I would say would be one of the last resorts. You should really try to solve it from the source. And if it's just something you can't get away with, you just don't have the budget right now to upgrade the equipment or deal with the noise issues, Worst case scenario, you can use a denoising tool like what comes with Audacity. And uh, it's a little bit of a blunt instrument. Sometimes it makes some artifacts, but you know, sometimes it may be the only way you can get a clean enough sounding recording for the client's needs. So I uh, hope that's helpful. And uh, if you have any more ideas for me, I'd love to get them. Send them over to Widdomsworld at edgestudio.com. And I'll see you guys next week.